Supercharged Science Cast, Episode 21, Closed Pin Catapults. Hello and welcome to the Supercharged Science Cast, our weekly science and math classes for kids, parents, and teachers, where we discover how to do real hands-on science and how to use math as a tool in everyday life. Now, my name is Aurora, and I am a mechanical engineer. I've taught at the university level in addition to the K-12 through level. I'm an astronomer. I fly airplanes. I worked for NASA when I first got started in my engineering career path, and I attended both high school and college at the same time. I'm a total overachiever, and I'm really passionate about math and science and teaching others everything that I know. So before we get started talking about our catapult, if you have a question and you'd like to send me an email, you can do so through my website, which is at www.superchargedsciencecast.com. Okay, let's get started. So energy. All the different forms of energy that you can think of, whether it's heat or electrical or chemical or nuclear or sound or any one of those, they can be broken down into two major categories, potential energy and kinetic energy. Now, potential energy, that's what we're going to be dealing with mostly today. Think of potential energy as the could energy. A battery could power a flashlight. The light could turn on. Now, I could make a sound, right? The ball could fall off the wall. The candy bar could give me energy, and I could run around in little circles all afternoon. So potential energy is energy that something has um, that something has that can be released. For example, the battery has the potential energy to light the light bulb of the flashlight. And if the flashlight is turned on and the energy is released, from the battery. So your legs have the potential to make you hop up and down if you release that energy, like you do whenever it's time to do science, for example. So the fuel in the gas tank that's in your car in the driveway, that has the potential energy to make the car move. Does that make sense? So for us today, the spring in the clothespin has the potential energy. That's where the energy could be, help us release the ball. Okay, so that's potential energy. Now on the other end, kinetic energy, this is the energy of motion. Now. We're going to be dealing with kinetic energy actually quite a bit too, so we're actually going to be dealing with both of them. And kinetic energy is an expression of the fact that a moving object can do work on anything that it hits. It describes the amount of work that the object could do as a result of its motion. Whether something is zooming or racing or spinning or rotating or speeding or flying or diving, if it's moving, it has kinetic energy. How much energy depends on two important things, how fast it's going and how much it weighs. Now, we're utilizing the springiness in the popsicle stick and the spoon and the torsion spring in the clothespin, and we're going to use that to fling the ball across the room. And by moving the fulcrum as far from the, the, the ball launch pad as possible on the catapult, we're going to get a greater distance to press down and release the projectile. So we're actually also doing simple machines here, but we don't have enough time to cover it for today. Um, that would be a, a certain type of lever. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to show you how to build it right down here on my desk. Are you ready? Here we go. We're going to make a super simple catapult, and to do that, you're going to need a spoon, or you can use a fork. You're going to need a popsicle stick, something to throw, a hot glue gun, and a clothespin, and a piece of scrap wood, or you can even hold this one in your hand if you want, but I'm going to use a piece of wood. Okay, so what do you do first? Well, the first thing we're going to do is hot glue our clothespin right to the board. Okay, just like that, so that it opens this way. Okay, your next step is to hot glue your popsicle stick to the top half of your clothespin. So it looks like that. Okay, and then your last step is to glue your spoon to the end. You're going to go ahead and put your ball in, and you want to put this on the end of a table so you have enough room to open that up. And then you simply push down and let go and you have a clothespin catapult. So make sure when you launch this, you see I can't push it down very far if, I'm, if I've got it on the table here, it only goes down so far. So you want to hang this over a table edge so this goes all the way down. Then you load it with your ball and release. 
Now you can also put a trigger in here. I can load it with like a pencil. Now if I put like a pencil in here, I can load my ball in this side, and all I have to do now, and I'll lift it up a little bit, pretend it's on a table, and all I have to do is release the pencil. <laughs> okay, it is time to be wrapping things up for today. There is a downloadable student worksheet that goes with this topic for you teachers out there. You can print it out and use it as your lesson plan. For you parents uh, who have homeschool kids or parents looking for enrichment for your kids, you can use that as well. You'll find that right under this video on my website, which is at www.superchargedsciencecast.com. Just enter in your email address, and I will send you that student worksheet that goes with class today. Okay, next time we get together, we are going to be doing some more math, and then we're going to be doing some more science. So thank you so much for the privilege of being your coach, teacher, and guide along your science journey. I hope you enjoy learning something new, and so you can take it and roll it and make it better. This is just step one of the process. I hope your catapult gets bigger and better and more improved than the one that I showed you. And if you'd like to replay this class or access the free downloads I mentioned, just go to www.superchargedsciencecast.com and I will see you in the lab.